Thank you, Zach. Definitely a high demand feel for the future. Our next presenter, it's going to be a duo, Victoria Andre Fonseca and Hannah Cabral. <laughs> Hannah Cabral is a junior at DHS. She is involved in cheerleading principals advisory medical careers club in DECA. She gave her first TED talk last year and loved it so much that she's back to give another. This year, Hannah is working with senior Victoria Andre Fonseca. Victoria is a member of the DEC Leadership Committee, a freshman mentor, and as the volunteer throughout high school. Victoria chose to participate at our TED conference because she wants to step out of our comfort zone and thought senior year would be a good time to do so. Their TED talk is about the impact of e-commerce on our society. Please welcome Victoria Andre Fonseca and Hannah Cabral as they present how e-commerce is shaping the business world. Raise your hand if you've ever ordered something online. A majority of you have. Now I have one question. Why? You could probably give me a multi <laughs> multitude of different answers. Um, but most prominently, it's just simply easier to go online and order something than it is to go out to the store to get it. We're impatient. We want everything now. So we go online and we get overnight shipping and it's at our doorsteps the next morning. We live in a society where it's normalized to order just about anything online, from clothes to toys to even groceries. So what is e-commerce? E-commerce is commercial transactions conducted electronically on the internet. For example, buying a product on Amazon. Many of you have probably <coughs> heard that Toys R Us is on the road to going out of business. Why is that? Well, because of competitors like Amazon. Back in 2000, Toys R Us signed a 10-year contract with Amazon to be their exclusive vendor of toys. Now back then, that seemed like a good idea. Little did Toys R Us know, they were actually setting themselves up for failure. You see, not only did Toys R Us miss the opportunity to grow their own online market, they essentially were selling themselves out to Amazon. So not only are their in-store sales declining, they're now losing profit due to other competitor toy companies that Amazon sells from. Now their profits are dropping and they're on the road to going bankrupt. The CEO of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, said, if you build a great experiment, experience, customers tell each other about that. Word of mouth is very important. Why is Amazon so successful? Bezos has a brilliant mindset and understands and doesn't forget the old-fashioned rules and ethics of business. Word of mouth more, is more important now because of the world's biggest platform, the internet, so information is easily spread. Forrester Research and eMarketer are just two research databases. Based on Forrester Research, um, the e-commerce sales for just 2018 are projected at $414 billion. eMarketer projected slightly higher at $491.5 billion just in 2018. Now, whether you want to believe the higher number or the lower number, they're both, both ridiculously large numbers. So, as you can see, if this is how much it's growing just in 2018, how much farther is this going to go in the future? E-commerce data was collected in four separate Census Bureau surveys. These surveys use different measures of economic activity, such as shipments for manufacturing, sales for wholesale and retail trade, and revenue for service industries. Consequently, measures of total economic and e-commerce activity may vary by economic sector, are conceptually definitionally different and therefore are not additive. The Census Bureau's e-commerce report measures the value of goods and services sold online what, and they, on the internet. As many of you recognize some of these businesses such as Amazon, eBay, Walmart, Sears, and Best Buy, you may not know some of the other ones such as Alibaba Group, 
which is an e-commerce website based in China run by Jack Ma, and another business, Kohl's in Australia, which is an online supermarket. So where will e-commerce go? The answer is across borders. Right now, cross-border e-commerce is projected to grow 25% each year. The Asia-Pacific e-commerce is expected to grow two times the size of Western Europe and North America combined. From 2016 to 2021, e-commerce sales are predict predicted to increase by 141%. With the boost of the internet comes risk. Fraud has become much more common due to the boost in efficiency and popularity of e-commerce. Anyone anywhere can have access to your information if you aren't careful, if they have the tools and knowledge to hack into your personal account. You must take precautionary measures to do so. Credit card fraud is the unauthorized use of a credit or debit card or similar payment tool to fraudulently obtain money or property. Both credit card but credit or debit cards can be stolen if used on an unsecured website or identity theft scheme. In 2016 alone, 3 billion Americans were hacked into, and credit card fraud happened to them. So I know a majority of you guys are sitting there thinking, this is boring, this doesn't matter, this doesn't apply to me. But the reality of it is, if it doesn't apply to you now, because you use your mom's credit card to order everything online, it will eventually. Today, there are over 160 million Americans that have credit cards. I know a couple months back, something happened to me where luckily I was able to be reimbursed for my money, but I tried to order this necklace online for my sister for her birthday. And um, I went on this website. It said it was going to be shipped in from Michigan. So I was like, oh, it's in the United States. It's not that sketchy. It'll be here soon. So I put in all my information, and I clicked send. And it kind of gave me this weird number, not really a confirmation number, but it almost looked like an error message. So I went onto my online banking account, and I saw that I was charged for this, but it charged me multiple times. So I was charged the fee four more times. And immediately after that, my bank called me, and they said, you just ordered something from Istanbul. We're canceling all. We're freezing your card. You're going to be reimbursed but you need to be more careful ordering something online. So it's very easy for us to be tricked into something and see that, oh, this says it's in the United States, but maybe it's not. So we have some tips for you to avoid fraud. First of all, try to avoid ordering things on your phone. That's, hope you're okay up there. <laughs> Um, try to avoid ordering things on your phone. It's small print, and it's a lot easier to get scammed. So if you're doing this on a computer, you want to look to the top left corner of your screen where you can see a little tiny green lock. That means you're ordering from a secured website. That's what you want to do to make sure that there's no outside invaders on the website hacking in and getting your credit card information. Also, you want to make sure you're purchasing from a reputable brand. Ladies, I am with you. I understand how tempting it is when you're scrolling down Twitter and you see the bikini and it's $5.99, you get the top and the bottoms, and it's going to be free shipping if you order $50 worth of merchandise or more. I know how tempting it is. But most of the time, those things are being shipped in from Shanghai, and they probably will charge you more money than you ordered stuff, <laughs> more money worth of than what you ordered. And you're probably never going to see the bathing suits. And if they do come in, it's probably going to be about three months later, and summer's going to be over. Also, be cautious when you're dealing with international companies. In the United States, we have special laws in place to make sure that we're safe ordering things online. But not all companies have the same regulations. So if you're ordering something from outside the US, be sure to look into where you're ordering it from, if it's a reputable brand, and make sure that they have laws in place that are going to keep your identity safe. Lastly, be cautious um, with what you're using. If you're using a debit card, it's usually a lot harder to get reimbursed because the money will come out of your account automatically. If you use a credit card and it's charged as credit, it's a lot easier for your bank to reimburse you the money. Also, investing in Visa cards is a good idea because they can only take out whatever your authorized amount was from that, and they can't empty all of your bank accounts. 
After the information we have presented today, we ask this question. Will all commerce eventually be over the internet? How far will we let it go? Thank, Thank you. you.